So I thought we'd get straight into another electrical OM design, this time looking at how you can set up for a gateway kind of situation. We're finding that more and more often on domestic premises where consumers are opting for this whole home backup. And as always with Murdoch Soft Electrical OM, you get the design detail within the software to really help steer you in the right direction, flag up any challenges that you might have in your installation and also help you come up with the best design possible. So starting up with this one, we need to create our main supply and we're just popping that into place as if it was a normal TNCS and our main service fuse and such needs specifying. Now this is important because when we are using gateways, generally they come with some pre-configured overcurrent protective devices and usually you're going to have some issues with partial selectivity. I'm going to fiddle around with that a little bit through the course of this video and show you how that plays out within the software. But you can see here we've got that main supply and we've kind of dictated a value of um, ZE and our PFC and such and we can introduce a switchboard. Now this is essentially going to become our Give Energy Gateway. That is probably the most familiar product people have in terms of gateways. There's the Tesla power walls as well, and we've had a SIG energy system we did recently, which also operates on the gateway principle. Now with these goes gateways um, are fed by uh, tails from the grid, but you also have inputs from solar PV, battery storage, and you can even have connections going off to things like EV charge points. So with this one, we've got our main tails coming into it and we've got a 16 mil earth. And for the minute, we're gonna um, make sure we've dis uh, disabled the overcurrent protective device on that circuit. And we're just gonna pop an isolator in there. We'll come back to this later on, but the isolator in essence is a tails isolation point, if you like, pre our Give Energy Gateway, because that's typically how we set these up. So we're now gonna insert some of those um, connections and final circuits. And first up, we're gonna go for the battery storage side of things. And with this one, we're using the UPS option. There's other ways of approaching this through Modex Soft Electrical OM, but I find this the easiest. If you've got another method that you would prefer to me, uh, me to show or a tip for myself to use in our future designs, please do drop them in the comments alongside this. But I'm just creating here the all-in-one, uh, it's six kilowatt rating. You can set whatever UPS power and power you've got, so your KVA rating of the product, depending on what you're using, that will vary. All of those are totally configurable from within the software, which is really useful. You're kind of not tied to one setup. So you can see I'm just playing around there with some of those figures and it kind of maps across, giving us a few error warnings based on what these pre-populate with. So within the Give Energy system, they use ABB breakers. So we're gonna make sure we select the right um, overcurrent protective device for this particular circuit. And with the all-in-one side of things, they're on um, a double pole MCB, which is linked to um, an RCBO. But in this case, we're gonna just use the S200 series and make sure we swing it over to double pole. They were type AC at the beginning, they're now type A's. And make sure we've got the rating correctly set for that as well at 32 amps. So we need to adjust the size and type of our cables now. So we're going for a multi-core 90 degree rated XLP cable, non-armored, and we're gonna set that to six millimeters um, and a 10 meter length. Again, all configurable based on the actual design of your system. So it's just a really fast run through of some of the things you can do. And you can see I've left the 70 degree setting box tick there because the um, accessories within this circuit are only rated to that value. Important you do tick that box. We're now gonna insert another connection, which is gonna be the solar PV, and that's in the converters box. And you see that pops that straight into there. And again, it comes predefined with certain um, values. You can set that yourself in the, in the settings, but mine are just as they are out the box. I've never really messed with them because there's no real preset in the way we work. If you're doing similar things within a commercial design company or whatever, you may most commonly use B-type RCBOs, for example. So you'd have those set up in there. But you see, we're just gonna use a five kilowatt inverter here. You can check through the ratings and you can see it's giving some warnings because we've basically got no inputs whatsoever. So we're below the min voltage rating of that inverter. We can change all that in a minute. We've got the AC rating of the inverter, which is five kilowatts. And you can see again, it's popping up some error warnings due to the predefined sizes of the cables. So we're gonna swing all those over again, making sure we've got that run 70 degree C box ticked. And again, change our cable size to six millimeters. 
and we can now set the overcurrent protective device which again on the PV side of the gateway is an ABB and again the S200 RCBO and you just need to make sure you choose the right one and swing it over to double pull. Now as you move through these options and enable and disable where they're needed you can see some of the warnings disappearing and others coming back in and you can see on that one I've made the mistake that um, is easy to do with the uh, protection device and then the isolation so it's worthwhile making sure you are choosing the right box there it's an easy mistake to make in the software certainly for myself so double check when you are filling those in but you see with the pv strings here um, i'm just going to make an array up i'm not going to go and get the the data off the jinko panels but we'll say these are the jinko um, 440 panels and we'll start with 10 of them i'll have a play around in the software and show you how that affects some of the figures and again these are all user defined so whatever panel you're using you can insert your standard test conditions your imps and your umps um, so that can all be inputted and it will form the volt drop side of things more clearly that's the one we're really looking at in terms of our solar pv design and again you can set your cable sizes your installation methods as well so you can see we've got the solar energy cable over on the right hand side at the minute it's showing 1.5 mil but that is going to be adjusted to six millimeters because we do need to ensure we've got the right size conductor within that and again your length depending on where these are running up the building they could be 10 they could be 30 meters whatever they are it's all adjustable within the software you can see the solar pv inverter has swung up to a yellow so it's given a, a warning and that's basically to do with the dc to ac ratio so the um, inverter settings box is quite happy however the ratio is not within the kind of recommended um, limits that are out there in industry if we change that to say 14 panels so we've got more of those jinkos within the string now i know that that would over peak a lot of inverters but this one we're okay because we've got up to a thousand volts but you can see the peak power is above the rating of the inverter which is typical for the way we would set these kind of systems up but it is warning us of that and you can see the dc to ac ratio has got that little information box at the side um, and you can see how that plays out the industry standards 1.2 to 1.5 so within that um, figure there, so it's given us a, a point that we might be um, causing a problem to our inverter, but it's just one of those to check and you can change the peak PV power within the inverter should you wish to get rid of that warning because a lot of these inverters will overrun their um, rated AC output for the PV input. I know with a Give Energy Hybrid, for example, I think that'll take um, 7.5 kilowatt PV input and output 5 kilowatt AC the extra two and a half is really just useful in direct input to your battery storage if you've got some DC coupled batteries. So again, you can adjust all of that should you wish. So the peak PV power might be above the AC rating of the um, inverter itself, which we've done now so you can see that it's not flagging that warning as far as there. Now if we move on, we can apply those changes so everything's set and go back into the schematic. And again, we can now insert an EV circuit. So that'll be a final circuit. And again, in the Give Energy Gateway, you have the option of putting an EV charge point straight into it. So with this one, we're gonna use one of the Give Energy charge points, which do the cloud sync. So they don't need any CT or data cables between the gateway and the charge point itself. The charge point just needs a reliable internet connection so it can sync up with the um, Give Energy system online. So again, this is 7.2 kilowatt charge point and we'll have to change all of the cable sizes and the protective devices to suit. So we're gonna again go for a six mil and we'll make sure we've got that multi-core non-armored again. So if you imagine your um, MYY or HITA for something along those lines and we can change our overcome protective device as well. So in this case, we'll pop a Proteus breaker in there. They're not precious in the protective devices you're using within these gateways because they're not on buzz bars. They are just kind of free wired. So you're under less um, problems with your intercompatibility and the overall rating of the enclosure as we would be with a domestic consumer unit and I think the instructions we've given energy have an MCG product but we use the Proteus double pole RCBOs that are bi-directional um, they tick the box for us very nicely and we've gone for a 40 amp rated one there you can see it has got a warning on because I've forgotten to make the change to a double pole option which again those Proteus RCBOs are but we'll move on with the consumer unit because also out the gateway you have all of the house loads so we're going to create this 14-way board, which is just the consumer unit within the house, and we can start to set up the supply cables to that. And again, generally, they're with your tails. 
So the grid comes into the gateway in tails and then it goes out from the gateway in tails to the consumer unit. And the earth again as a separate conductor goes off onto that as well. You can see it's um, got the cables in the wall. It's warning us about that. So these are gonna be clipped direct on the surface to solve that problem. And you can see we have got our um, overcurrent protective device selected in there, but I'm currently doing the same mistake I often make and I have not put it in protective devices. I'm putting it in the isolation box. So we'll make that change back in a minute. And you can see the selectivity study boxes have illuminated because there is some um, partial selectivity problems within the design of this circuit. And it's really, really hard at a domestic level when you are staging MCBs and even fuses to get that full selectivity. It's not easy. Um, so it's one of those where you're just trying to make your best effort at it. And I guess really you're with that worried about the service views overlapping into our MCBs. It's um, something that is really hard to work around. You can see there where we've got those small overlaps and we're getting that little yellow warning that we might want to look at that. We'll just swing that EVSC fault away and get rid of the, the problem in there. And that is to do with the, the double pole side of things. So if we pop that out, change it to two pole and it'll clear that fault. So it's one less bit of red in the design. And again, with the selectivity, you can mess around with the overcurrent protective device within, within that circuit. So you can see at the minute it's an 80 amp um, 609.47-2 6KA rated and it's two pole. We can change it and see if that has any effect. There's loads of different options within the listings on the software. So you can see there's all, you can swap to a C type um, you can change and see if that made any difference. And you can also mess about with your main supplier's fuse if it was not a 1361, for example, and you had um, BS88s, pop those in there. Generally, you're always going to get that overlap where you've got 100 amp MCB and your 100 amp service fuse. There is a workaround you can do, which just about swings it in at an 80 amp rating. So for the, um, the consumer unit on the house, for example, you can see that that is an, an MCB. Uh, 60898 where it's showing that six amp rating because I've put it in the incomer box there so we can take that one off and then the overcurrent protective device were at 80 amps but if we was to swap that over into a 60947-2 C rating you would still have a selectivity overlap but if you change it to a B type it just swings in so the only real problem you would have at that stage is with a grid um, MCB inputting into the gateway and also then your main service fuse. You can see they've just got that little overlap on the corner there at the bottom of the graphs. These are brilliant on Modex Soft Electrical OM. It visualizes where those problems are really clearly um, and it's up to you if that's a concern or not. Um, and as I said, it's really hard to get full selectivity in a domestic environment when you have got those things. But you can see if I swap that over to a B type, that has now cleared and we're just left with the, the selectivity problem on the 100 amp grid input um, that currently isn't sat there because I've just got the isolator. If you remember right at the start, I just popped the isolator pre the, pre the gateway, which is basically your main tails isolator, but there is no overcurrent protection on that grid input in the gateway, which in the real world there is. So we'll go back and adjust that in a minute. The schematic's fully adjustable, so if you want to move things around and have it laid out better, you can do. I usually use this on a large 27-inch monitor, but the aspect ratio for recording makes it really difficult. So I've done this on my laptop screen, and it shrinks it all down a little bit much, so you're kind of moving around to see things. But if you've popped it on a, a large monitor, it's um, really, really easy. So it's one of those where if you're doing design and using the schematic, you do want the screen real estate to be able to work with the system and um, lay it all out. Because these can get really full, really full, really quickly. If you imagine, even at a domestic level, if we had another subboard off that house one to a garage consumer unit or whatever, and commercial systems can be vast. But you can see across the gateway there, we've got all of our RCBOs in there for the AIO, the PV and the EV. And then we've got our um, circuit running off to the house loads, which is the consumer unit. And we'll just pop the overcurrent protection in now for that. Uh, main grid feed and again on that it's another ABB it's the MCB but this one is 100 amp rated and this is where we'll flag up some selectivity that we really can't do anything about without asking the DNA to give us a 200 amp head into the installation which would be you know ridiculous it's it's one of those where you just have to accept it you'll see it 
however you stage your systems with submains generally at a domestic level. I've done content on that before out in the real world to illustrate it and the software showing us that quite clearly. You can see in there, I've got the tail set to 10 mil. So I've just seen that on the supply side. If we go back in there, we can adjust that and set them to the 25 mil. And again, these are all adjustable. So if you want to change out any of these sizes or values in terms of your perspective fault currents and your ZEs and stuff, you can do all of that and set it up exactly as it is in the real world. So we can change those to 25 mil and that'll adjust it on the schematic. So we've now got our supply running through the service fuse on those 25 mil tails through the meter into our tails isolator. And then we're in the gateway with all those protective devices which run off to feed those um, solar PV, the AIO, and the house loads consumer unit. I think that's a good way of illustrating the design in the way this is set up. You might have a better way of doing that. If you do, drop it in the comments and let me know. I'm sure the, the guys and girls at Modex Soft Electrical OM would be able to um, present this way better than I can, but this is how we are using it. The superpower of this software is the reporting. So the report this can produce pre you going to install anything to give you insight of to things you might want to be aware of but also as handover packs and presenting these to consumers both at a domestic and commercial level you know that the data is in there and some you can say you've done everything possible to comply with every intent of the regulations and also safety performance you know you've covered all of those bases off by running your installations through this design software you can see even to the basics in terms of circuit layouts, but it does all the fault drop calculations, it does the selectivity studies, it does your arc flash. You can, if you want, use like an AutoCAD function where you can drag and drop circuit accessories around a plan as well. So you don't even need to input through the circuit edit tool and the schematic. You can just kind of drag those around, set them into position, do the wiring links, and it does it all itself. It is amazing. I've shared videos on that on my channel already. So if you want to see some of that, it's already on there and Modex Soft have a great YouTube channel of their own and Spence Henry some awesome content that he's got out there, webinars and such, which really delve into the finer points of this. I am literally scratching the surface here as what I would call maybe slightly above amateur level in my usage of it. I'm still learning this as I go through it, um, but the resources are there. So if you want to put the time in, there's courses you can take as well. If you get in touch with Spencer, and the team over at Modexoft, they can help arrange that for you. There is the 14 day free trial that they do as well. So there'll be a link in the description alongside this video. If you wanna go and check it out, you can download it. All the features are there for you to use, totally free for 14 days. And um, um, I don't think there's anything else on the market that gets close. And I've tried most of these software packages um, of today and of the past. It is just on another level. You get all of your diagrams and such as well. I've made one of these for the safe isolation board that we've got for the campaign running around the trade shows. So we've been out showing people how these work in the real world as well. And it's just a super useful resource. So I hope that helps explain how high I look about setting up the Give Energy Gateways and All-in-Ones. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.